Rooftoppers, Chapter 27. Right, Sophie and Matteo and Safi and her sister are still at police headquarters. They've broken in and they're finding the file that may contain the information about Safi's, er, Sophie's mum. Sophie was still staring at Matteo, at Safi, at the photograph, when there was a scuffle and a thump and a voice called from above their heads. Sophie, are you down there? Who's that? said Safi. Matteo said, the police, run! Sophie gripped them both round the waist. Wait, I think it's... Would you mind coming back up? said the voice. I have no doubt it's unintentional, but you are metaphorically scaring the life out of me. Come back, please. It was Charles. The three of them scrambled up the drain pipe. Matteo wiped a patch of blood off the sill with his elbow as he went and slammed the window behind him. Sophie carried the photograph in her teeth. Charles was leaning against the chimney pot, watched warily by Gerard and Anastasia. He held Sophie's cello in one hand and his umbrella tucked under his arm. This young lady, he said, pointing at Anastasia, very properly tried to kill me until I explained I was your guardian. This young gentleman has convinced her I was harmless. I believe your cello convinced him. You brought my cello, Sophie stared blankly at him, across the rooftops. How? Why? I tied it to my back. He looked ruminatively at the cello. I rather thought you might need it. If you discovered something, something grey, he crouched down and studied Sophie's eyes. From the look on your face, it's not the, that's not the case. I've got an address, said Sophie. She was still shivering from head to foot. It might be her, I don't know. Matteo took the address from her. Rue de l'Espoir. That's Garrier country, near the church of St. Vincent de Paul. It's east of where we were last night. The other three nodded. How do you know, said Sophie. Gerard shrugged. Rooftoppers have maps in their heads. Anastasia said, They'll be angry, Sophie. The Garriers. Rue de Espoir. It's like going into their front hall and singing Christmas carols. I don't care, said Sophie. You don't understand, said Anastasia. It's their headquarters. They carry knives. You can stay here if you like. I'm going. Matteo said, Sophie, we never go there. I don't care, Sophie said again. She meant it. She had never felt less afraid. Perhaps she thought that's what love does. It's not there to make you feel special. It's to make you brave. It was like a ration pack in the desert, she thought, like a box of matches in a dark wood. Love and courage, thought Sophie, two words for the same thing. You didn't need the person to be there with you, even perhaps just alive somewhere. It was what her mother had always been, a place to put down her heart, a resting stop to recover her breath, a set of stars and maps. Charles had been politely silent while the others were talking. Now, he said, if we're going anywhere, Sophie, you and I should go at street level. These are sticky. I don't want to accidentally smash your cello on a chimney pot. No, said Sophie. I'm staying up here. Why, said Matteo. He was kicking at splinters of slate. His face was clenched tight. The police, if they caught me now, she didn't finish her sentence. And said, she said, Charles, I'll meet you there, all right? No, said Charles. This is very far from all right. She looked up at Charles. Please, she said. Her gaze took in his long legs and sharp bones and the kindness of his eyes. I promise not to get hurt. You said to do extraordinary things. This counts as an extraordinary thing. Charles sighed. That is not untrue, perhaps. He tried to raise his eyebrows, but they only flickered and sank down. I can't think what Miss Elliot would say, but yes, that is certainly true. His smile was strained. I suppose I will see you at Rue de l'Espoir. Then, if you're not there in an hour, I will. I don't know what I'll do. Just be careful. He hitched the cello onto his back and turned to the drain pipe. If you're going, said Matteo, you'll need us. You don't know the way. I know, said Sophie. Yes, thank you. Anastasia said, mais no. She launched an angry stream of French at Matteo. Sophie cur uncurled her spine. She had not realized how often she slouched. At full height, she was taller than Anastasia and almost as tall as Matteo. Sophie raised her eyebrows, and Anastasia and Matteo fell silent. You don't have to come, she said, but if you're coming, let's go.